Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to walk through another camp, this camp here behind me. Hopefully you can hear me, there's traffic today. Um, but we're going to walk through it as if you were picking this camp up, show you some of the different features, how to use them, um, and just prepare you to have great adventures with your family and friends. So anyways, we'll get started. I'll take you around the exterior, show you how to use it, some of the features, like I say, and hopefully that gets you started. As we walk up on the camp, we'll just start here at the front. So we've got the Bulldog Hitch. This is a two and five sixteenths ball. I really like this setup. Basically what it'll do is you'll squeeze it and that slides. And then it's got this pin that you'll wanna make sure that you have in. It just slides into that hole and then we'll latch around. Um, as far as getting it off, it's spring loaded. So you'll just pull that back and it'll pop back off. Um, a lot of our camps, a lot of our customers are having us set them up with equalizer hitches on them. And the best way that I've found to do that is to first hook your ball on and then latch it down, lock it onto your truck, and then jack the camp or your jack back up until there's no tension on them. And then you can load the arms on the side. This camp's not equipped with it. Um, but if you have a camp that's set up that way, you'll understand what I'm talking about. This is an adjustable coupler. Usually when you come to get it, if you come to get it or if we ship it, um, I'll set this up to where it's set up perfectly for your truck to ride height to where it tows good. Um, as well as most, we recommend it. Like if you get a equalizer hitch, it also has the ability to be adjusted on it as well. And so we can really fine tune the tow characteristics of your camp. Then you have your tow chains. You can see they're super heavy duty. Um, you've got your hooks here to keep them up out of the mud and the snow and that stuff. Your breakaway switch. What this does is if this is pulled, there's a key in it. You can see this key here. It'll pull out and what it does is it'll send power back to the brakes and lock those brakes up. So you'll wanna make sure that this is also hooked up to the tow vehicle. So if it does end up coming off the ball or anything that way you're in an accident, that that'll pull and it'll lock your brakes up and, and stop that trailer. So um, you've got your Bulldog heavy duty jack here. We do electric jacks. Um, you'll just wanna keep, there's a grease cert here. I would say, you know, once a year, put a little grease in that, make sure everything's kept up. And then you have your seven gallon propane tanks. Now these have what they call an auto changeover regulator. As you can see right now, it's green, if you can see it. But basically there's a lot of mi misinformation out there about these auto changeover regulators. Um, you can see there's this little arrow. This points to which tank that you're set on. And so if I set this in the middle, it'll actually pull off whichever tank's open. But if that tank runs out, everyone thinks that it's going to change over and switch over to this tank. Well, it doesn't actually do that. Um, what'll happen is if you have both tanks open, it'll draw off the one um, until it's empty and that it'll only let a percentage of the other one through. So enough to maybe run a fridge to keep that from um, your food from spoiling. But I've found the best way to use this is just to set it on a specific tank. When that tank runs out, I know it's out. Whereas if I set it the other way, I never really know if it's out until I go and use appliances and find out something's not working and then I'm kind of confused. So I like to just set it on one side use that propane if it runs out switch it over to the other tank and that way i know what my propane levels are and so it makes it really easy that way like i say it's got this wing nut locks your tanks down most of your places depending on if you unload your tanks or not um, can actually fill them right on the camp so 
pretty easy setup there. There's the tank cover that keeps your hoses from getting sun rotted and things that way. Then you have your step. This just folds up over. And we, we get a lot of questions about, well, y'all, what holds it down? It's actually a pretty heavy duty step. So it's, I mean, it's not going anywhere once you get it set down. Um, so you wanna make sure that that's up when you're traveling. Um, so you're not dragging it or anything. This one also has the storage compartment and it's just got your latch here and you can pull it and then you can pull these grates out and store tire chocks, you know, whatever in there, sewer hose, anything that you're not worried about getting in the elements. All of our camps that um, have the water package will have the solar or the sewer hose um, storage underneath so but nice little storage area to keep your gear and stuff that like I said you're not worried about being in the elements and then yeah it just folds over and latches um, the next thing this one's got a deck on it um, it's about a four foot well it's actually a five foot deck five by 102 inches so these customers will be hauling their four-wheeler as you can see Underneath here, the wraps are stored. They've got pins to hold them in. So nice tight storage. You've got your stabilizer jacks and your handles will be in your camp. So most of the time I'll put them in the back compartment. You've got stabilizer jacks on all four corners. Makes it really nice once you get there to stabilize your camp. But those ramps, like I say, they're stored away. And then they each got these notches on the top. Um, where they'll sit in to where you could load your four-wheeler. It's really nice setup, you know, for hauling your gear and stuff. But it also, once you get there, makes for a nice porch. You can put the lawn chairs out, you know, sit out and relax. But it's all really heavy, grip tight. Um, my guys actually call this the cheese grater. So this one, this camp's got a camp chef and they say, oh, you'll cook on it and then you just bring it up to the front and grade your cheese onto your plate. But really grippy, heavy duty to where, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, I do a variety of different decks, treated wood, um, this kind of setup. So I can do a variety of different things there. It just depends on what the customer wants. One thing that I failed to mention while I was here is all of ours will come with that seven pin um, connection. And then the nice thing too is all of our wiring is run in conduit and there's basically connections in one spot and that's just right here underneath this frame. But I'll crawl under there and show you. So this box here, this is where all your connections are. So if you ever have any issues with lights, it's easy to trace because everything's right there. So you don't have to, you know, trace wires or do anything. Come to this box, verify power, makes it really convenient as far as figuring out what's going on. So let's go ahead and just continue around the camp. So here on the front, um, you have your traditional broom holder, your horseshoe holders that kind of give it that neat little characteristics. Um, but as you can see, the entire camp is edged with angle iron. So this is a two by two angle iron that goes all the way around the camp. Um, very stout and, and really finishes it off nice. And as you can see around the top of the arch, the angle iron continues around the top of the arch. You know, if you were to hit a branch or anything that way, you're not gonna do anything to it that way. We have our marker lights, it's all DOT compliant, you know, both on the tops and on the side. Um, your porch light, your Dutch door, which is a big popular option, especially, I really like it on this deck because I can lock the kids in, open that top half, hang out here on the porch. So really nice setup. Um, yeah, the Dutch door is a, a very popular option, so. Now on to the passenger side. This one's equipped with the awning. Um, it's got the wainscot down the side, which I really like. I think it, it makes the camps look extremely sharp. But like I say, it's got the awning, so I'll demonstrate how to operate that um, after we just go through the different features of this. 
you've got your windows your frosted window there in your bathroom and then you have your exhaust fan for your bathroom and once we go inside i'll also demonstrate how to use that all of these windows are sliding windows tinted um, they have the screens in them so it's nice to get a little airflow through them and like i say you've got your angle iron that goes along the bottom this is a spray port which has a quick connect hose set up to where you just hook up your hose you're able to you know spray off the dog clean fish whatever you want to do i do do outside showers um, i find that this is a little more resilient as far as getting set up um, to winterize and stuff that way i don't have as much issues as i do with the outside showers but like i say it, it really comes down to what the customer wants so we've got our dot marking lights six lug wheels and you shouldn't have to do anything with these i mean these have the dust caps on them so this little rubber piece will actually pull out and i would recommend once a year um greasing up those there's a grease cert that's inside of this greasing those up keeping them lubed now one thing i will tell you ever since they started going to these easy lube hubs i find a lot more issues with axles just because people put the grease gun on it and just pump and pump and pump um, until they end up ruining seals and so um be cautious of that you don't need a whole lot of grease um, just to keep them lubed up so that's one thing that you'll want to watch then you have your water heater your outside compartment your lights um, this is an access for your winterization and i will like i say i'll show you how to use that as well this one is set up with the camp chef this one so this is our latches um, they'll pop and then they twist and then they'll pull out. This has the camp chef already plumbed into it and I'll demonstrate how to use that as well. So that kind of wraps up this side other than how to use some things. So I'll get the camera set up on the tripod and then I'll demonstrate how to use the awning. Before I get you set up on the tripod, I'll just go ahead and show you on these arms how they work. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you go to open this awning is so these are all uh hd awning arm um meaning it's all metal so you don't have any plastic stuff which i really like because the plastic stuff's just cheap so these are what locks your arms in okay so you'll want to unlock them there's one of them on both arms and then this little lever is what rotates up so you can flip it up to unlock it Okay, and then we'll go down to this arm and do the exact same thing. Unlatch that, and it'll just stay up. Okay, and then these are just more adjustment. This is for an awning type fabric that goes around the exterior. So once we have those unlocked and this lifted up to the unlocked position, then we're ready to go ahead and pull it out. And so I'll get you set up on the tripod and then I'll show you how that's done. Once you've got your arms unlocked and it in the unlocked position, the up position, you're ready to go ahead and pull it out. So the awning will come with this rod um, and I generally will put these in one of the back compartments for you. Um, but it, go ahead and just latch it into the, your drop down rope. And then it's also got this stabilizer in the middle, depending on the size of the camp you have. If you've got a longer awning, I like to put these, it keeps that awning from bowing, helps it last a lot longer. So some of you will have that stabilizer there in the middle. If it's a shorter camp, I generally don't do them. So anyways, then you just go ahead and give it a pull. Okay, and you'll pull it all the way out and you'll think, God, it's coming down really low. How do I get it up? Well, that's where the adjustment comes into play. So once we get it out to this point, then we can go ahead and adjust the arms and bring it up. This part is definitely a lot easier with two people, but you can definitely do it by yourself. Um, the next thing you'll wanna do is loosen these lower knobs. This upper knob, like I say, is just for a fabric, um, but this lower knob will allow this arm to move and stretch. So you want that loosened. You don't need to loosen it all the way just so that there's not tension on it to where it can move up and down. Then you'll grab that handle that I showed you there at the first. Okay, and you'll be able to slide this arm up, okay, 
and you won't you probably won't be able to come all the way up at first um, just because the other arms lower so like I say once this is loose this is able to slide you'll go ahead grab this other arm Then you can come back, adjust where the desired height is. If the sun's coming up, you know, or whatever, you want that down to keep you a little more shaded. But you're able to adjust that to how you want it. And then you can put these arms out, tighten them to where when the wind catches it, it don't want to flip it back. Um, and then as far as putting it up, it's just reverse of that. You'll bring it down. First, you'll have to put your arms down. Maybe I'll just go ahead and show you while I'm here. So put your arms all the way down, still leave this loose, okay? Do the opposite side. Okay, and this is another thing, it's a lot easier to do with two people, but if you're by yourself, you can definitely do it. So in order to close it up now, that little lever here um, that we pushed up to the unlock position, we need to push it down to where it's retracting, okay? Now once you do that, it's gonna wanna go up. So you'll wanna keep an arm on, on this if you're doing it yourself. Um, if you've got someone helping you, you can hold on to the rope in the center. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lift this back up, grab my rod so that because I'm by myself, I can walk out, hook it in, and do that. So now that I have my rod, we can go ahead, I can show you how to do it if you're by yourself. So we'll push that down, it's gonna retract, it's in the, what it says on the arm is the down lock for travel. Okay, that's gonna, as you can see, if I let my arm up, um, that awning's gonna wanna retract. So keep pressure on that. And then I always walk and just grab the fabric. And then I'm able to walk back here to where my rope is. I let that retract until I can't reach it anymore. Put my hook in, allow that to come up. And sometimes you gotta give it a little push here on the end to get it to roll over that center. And then you'll just push these in. Push these in, lock them back up. Make sure the tension's off. And then lock those arms back in. Once that's locked, it won't allow that to go back up. So you'll go lock the other side. Make sure your little knobs are tight just so that you don't lose them traveling down the road. And aside from that, you're good. So, so I already have a video out on winterizing one of our camps and kind of the setup there. But you have your access panel here that has your bypass valves in. It makes it super easy. You don't have to climb over anything, especially, I mean, some of the older camps we built, um, you had to get behind the water heater and turn a valve and it just wasn't convenient, especially if you got a camp chef set up in yours. Um, so we've redesigned it to where we've got this easy access bypass set up to where it's just a matter of turning valves um, and then opening your valves, draining your water heater, and everything that way. Um, but one thing that I want to show you on the water heater, as far as the setup here, is how to operate the water heater. Okay, the first thing, these are generally all I do in camps is just an LP um, water heater, and I'll tell you the reason for that. As I work on RVs with either the electric um, LP option, almost every time they come in, the heating element on the electric side is burned out. And I'll tell you the reason for that. Most of them um, don't have a switch inside. Most of them will have a switch on the exterior to turn that electric heating element on. Now what happens is um, these people go camping, they go to a campground or whatever, they plug in, they're running their heater off the electric heating element. Um, they go home, they drain their water and everything, and then some of them will plug their trailers in to keep them charged, and they forget that electric heating element's on. 
So what'll happen is within y'all seconds um, of being plugged in, if there's not water in that water heater, it'll burn that heating element out. And so it's just easier to not have to worry about that. So we, like I say, the majority of the camps that we build, unless the customer specifies that they want it, just get a strictly LP um, set up here. So it's a pretty simple, um, not a lot to, to go wrong with it. But anyways, I'll show you the process of how this works because there is some confusion on um, when it's lit and things that way. So I'll go through and, and show you how to operate that. So when you come in the camp, and your camp may be set up different than, than how this one's set up, but generally I'll do all your switches and your monitoring systems up here in this upper cabinet. So this little switch here is for your water heater. Okay, and as you can see, the switch here is in the off position. If I switch this to the on position, the light will come on. And the light will stay on if that water heater doesn't light. But when the water heater lights, that light will go out. Now the confusion is, is say you run it out of propane. There, this light won't come on. Um, it may come on, but it won't stay on. And so you switch your tank over and you're thinking, well, my water heater is not working. Well, what it's done is it's gone into lockout. So maybe I'll go turn the propane off so you can see what happens when this goes into lockout. Okay, so I've got the gas off and this will simulate if it doesn't have gas. Okay, we'll turn it on, the light will come on. It's trying to ignite right now. It didn't light, so the light come back on. Now it'll try this three times. So it'll take a couple seconds, then it'll try and ignite again. The light will go out, simulating that it's lit. Um, but if the light comes back on, then you'll know that it didn't light. Okay, so it'll do this three times and then it'll go into lockout. And what lockout means is it's a safety feature. So say you had this on while you were traveling down the road or whatever, um, the f flame blew out. Well, it doesn't want that water heater pumping gas in there. Um, and so it, it'll go into lockout, meaning it won't let any gas out. It recognizes that there's no flame present. Um, so it goes into lockout and it'll do this as well um, if you run out of propane. So as long as there's no no propane present, that gas valve locks so it, yeah, you're not filling a compartment full of gas. So the process, if it goes into lockout, what you have to do is you have to come in, turn that off, turn that back on once you have propane available. Okay, and then it'll go in light. So. With that being said, what I do generally when I first come into the camp, because even if I go out right now and I turn those propane tanks on and come to light this, my guess is it's still not going to light. And the reason for that is there's air in the lines. So anytime I fill the tanks or do anything that way, what I'll do is I'll come out, turn my tank on, Okay, to where I'm getting propane. And then I come back in and the first thing that I do is I'll turn on my burner, okay? And once I get it lit, and I can even light a couple more of them, make sure that I'm getting gas flow through them, then I know I'm getting all the air out of the lines. Okay, now with your water heater and your camp chef, they're a little farther down the line, same with your furnace. So I let those burn for just a minute. Um, then I can go ahead, turn them off, hit my switch, and it'll take right off. So, and you'll be able to hear it when it lights too. Um, it's got a pretty loud torch sounding noise. So you'll be able to tell, and like I say, you can watch that light. If that light comes back on, you'll know it didn't light. Now on these water heaters too, there's there's some differences with them. Um, these ones have a plastic plug in them. And a lot of people that have had trailers before remember the anoid rods. Um, these tanks are an aluminum tank. Um, and so there's no need for an anoid rod. And this is actually a safety feature. So if you do get it too hot or if it freezes, this plug will actually blow out before the tank splits. 
And so, you know, they don't recommend putting any other type of plug in them. Um, just prevents anything from happening to that tank. Now, like I told you before with the electric heating elements, um, they burn out really quickly if you don't have water in it. Now, you're always going to want to make sure that you have water in the water heater. Um, if you're going out in the spring before you fill it up or whatever and you want to make sure that it works, you can hit that switch, make sure it lights, but don't let it run for very long. Um, these do have safety features on them to where if you do run it without water, it's not going to ruin it, um, but it's not good for them. So anytime you use the water heater, anytime that switch is on, just make sure you've got your valves open to where you're getting water in that water heater and, and you're good to go. So like I said, you don't want to run this water heater without water in it. Um, and a lot of you are probably thinking, well, how do I know if there's water in it or not? The easiest way that I've found you can open that little bypass and it'll be pressured if you've got your pump on and you've got water in it. Water will come out, you'll know there's water in it. If you don't get water out, make sure your water pump's on um, or you're hooked up to, if you're hooked up to city water, make sure your water's on um, and then come and check that. If you don't get water through that, chances are your bypass valves are still closed. So you'll wanna make sure that those are, are open to where the water can go in there. Also another thing on them bypass valves, if you notice that you're getting lukewarm water, you'll get warm and then cold or, you know, cold and then warm and vice versa. Um, chances are the mix valve is not all the way closed. So you'll wanna make sure both those valves are in here. If you have any of those symptoms, chances are it's just one of those valves. So make sure you get those in the right position. But like I say, make sure you get water in that, verify that before you fire the water heater up. Hopefully you guys are still with me. This is getting kind of long and probably boring anyways, but hopefully it's helpful for you that have camps. Um, and it seems like when our customers show up in the excitement of everything, it's kind of a lot to take in as I go through the camps with them. So this should help you, you know, recall some things that I've told you. Um, and this is kind of a brief walkthrough, but hopefully it jogs your memory of, of what we've talked about. So your camp chef, it's pretty dang easy. Um, it's just a matter of pulling it out. Your light for your camp chef is just right in here. It's on a switch, lighted switch. So you can turn that on if you're cooking in the evenings or whatever. But basically you'll pull it out, okay? And it stays out pretty dang far. Um, we're on a little bit of an angle here to where it's wanting to roll back in a little bit. But pull out, it's all plumbed into your gas. I'll show you. So once you get it pulled out, it's all plumbed into the gas. So you don't really have to do anything other than turn your valve on. And your valve just sits right back here. Okay, the best thing that I found, if, especially if you've got this splash shield on, is to pull the splash shield off to where you can get there to turn that valve on. Um, and then I always leave it out, let it cool down before I put it away. Um, that way, yeah, you're not burning anything up or whatever. So leave it out, let it cool down, make sure that that valve's off and then put it back away. So pretty slick little setup when you're out, put the Dutch ovens on it, cook outside. Um, really nice, I like this option. All right guys, hopefully you can hear me still. We're right next to the road and yeah, like you say, it's it's rush hour in, in our little town. So lots of traffic, but We'll go ahead and go and look at the back here. The first thing you're gonna notice is the solar panels. And, and this is generally the location that we put them, um, unless it's a narrower camp or a herd camp, something like that. Um, we generally will put them in different spots. But what you'll have here, you got your latch for your back compartment door. You've got, oh, no, we've got a lot of semis too that are making a lot of noise. So you'll have your fresh water storage in here, your water pump, all of that stuff. And I go through that in the winterization video. Um, so I'm not gonna cover a lot of that just for time's sake. Um, but you've got your door here, your solar panels. A lot of people will ask us, well, what, what kind of maintenance um, is required for the solar panels? And really, aside from keeping them clean, you don't have to do anything. So. I mean, if you're traveling down some dirt road, you know, dusty and stuff, it wouldn't hurt to wipe them off, keep them clean, um, help them be as efficient as what they can be. So anyways, that kind of covers the back. We do have your seven-way plug. 
Um, this is also wired for electric brakes, so if you are, say you're hauling your side-by-side -side or something that way, um, if it's got brakes on it, they'll work as well. So it's wired for everything that way. Um, also, if you got something that needs the battery charged in or whatever, it's wired to where it'll charge it as you're going down the road too. So um, you've got your receiver, your safety chain hookups, um, and it's rated to pull. I mean, I just recommend that you don't pull anything heavier than what what your camp is behind it or you'll run into some issues. So anyways, that's the back. So on the driver's side, you can see we've got a lot going on. So we'll just go through it real briefly, um, give you a kind of a, an overall layout of how it's laid out, how to use the thing. So we'll just start here in the back compartment. This is where your battery storage, your solar controllers will be at, as well as your battery disconnect. And I go through this in our solar video um, maybe aside from the battery disconnect. So this, if you're storing it, um, you can kill the power to everything, but your solar panels will still charge the batteries um, and you can still, yeah, you're in good shape that way. Even if you were to um, plug it in, it was still charged. So as you can see, the solar panels are charging right now. Fully charged will be, I mean, I'm guessing they're at probably 13, 14 volts right now. So doing their job there so big bank of batteries in this one generally i'll do two six volt standard these are sealed batteries so no off gassing um really nice setup then you'll have your water fills so you've got your tank fill here that'll go across into that back compartment fill that tank and then this one's if you were for to go if you were to go to an RV park and hook into water or if you're on property or something where you have water available you can hook into that and then it'll just pressurize the system and there will be no need to run the pump below it you have your furnace now this is very similar to the water heater in lighting it has a lockout as well so it'll it'll attempt to light three times if it doesn't find propane or it doesn't light in three times, um, it'll go into lockout and you'll have to turn it off and then turn it back on. One thing I will say about both the water heater um, as well as the furnace is wasps and insects and all sorts of things like to get in these exhaust tubes and burn build nests. So just out of habit in the spring before I use it, I take my air compressor and I just blow in here. Make sure you got your safety glasses on because you get all sorts of crap that comes out of it so you'll want to do this on the the water heater as well as the furnace just blow them out keep them clean because um, what will happen is if they get build up and you go to fire them off um, most of the stuff will burn out of it but it just they don't run very good you might have trouble trying to get at the light um, things that way so you'll want to keep them clean they do make some screens that go over these which definitely help keep things out of them um, so in my opinion it's a good purchase to pick up one of those um, screens for both the water heater and the furnace to keep the insects and stuff out of there so if you do ever need to get in this there's just the four screws um, and there is a, a breaker in there a little switch that's either off or reset if you do run into issues um, and you can't figure it out chances are that that slipped um, so you may need to get in there but like i say you you should never have to get in there i mean they're pretty pretty bulletproof systems so same thing on this side this is your access door for your wood storage so you can put your wood in there access it from inside as you'll see um, when i show you how to light this stove this is the intake to your fresh air um, for your stove and as you can see there's a screen in there so you don't have to worry about the insects and stuff getting in there and building a nest but they may get inside this so keep that clean as well then you have your electrical cord and this has a 30 foot cord so you can run this out to your generator um, or if you're at a campground or whatever you just plug it in it's 30 amp so it'll run your air conditioner and everything and then just tucks away and pretty pretty straightforward these are your exhaust vents for your ac same thing try and keep them cleaned out you shouldn't have to mess with the top one 
Um, but it wouldn't hurt to take this lower one off once a year and just make sure everything's clean in there. And then you have your holding tanks. Now this setup, these ones, this has the heated tanks on them. So I don't have these covered yet, just so you could see. But this is the heating element here. Um, so you've got your wires that run into it and it basically wraps around these tubes um, and it'll keep them warm. The switches are inside and I'll show you those as I do the inside video. So, and then the tanks themselves are boxed in um insulated and then heat from the furnace is plumbed into them as well as those electric heating elements so it gives you options as far as keeping those tanks from freezing um it's become pretty popular there's lots of options as far as holding tanks um but we can talk about that if you haven't got a camp already we can discuss those options if you do have this option in your camp um, we'll go through that as well so but I think that pretty well covers the exterior. Um, so we'll wrap this video up and then I'll do a second video going through the interior as this one's getting kind of long. Well guys, I was gonna try and knock this video out all in one shot. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot to cover and I'm kind of skimming over it um, briefly, but hopefully you've stuck with me. Um, especially if you are a, a new owner of one of these camps so that you can get more familiar with the systems, how things work, how you use them. Um, but I'm going to wrap this video up. We'll do another one um, of the interior features, how to use some of those things. So anyways, thanks for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. It helps the channel and we'll catch you on the next one.